everybody, I've got a really fun one for you today because behind me are three flavors of General Motors off-road full-size pickup truck. We have the Chevy Silverado Trail Boss, the Chevy Silverado ZR2, and the GMC Sierra AT4X. And in this video, we're gonna find out which flavor of off-road GM full-size truck is right for your lifestyle. So let's dive in and talk about the pricing because these vehicles are priced quite differently. So to my right, the bright red Silverado Trail Boss. This one as equipped, $62,000. This can be had much more affordably than the other two trucks, well into the $50,000 range if you wanted one with fewer options. In the middle, we have our long-term Silverado ZR2. This is the top dog Chevrolet Silverado off-roader. This one has equipped right around $67,000. And as we make our way to my right here, we've got the GMC Sierra AT4X as equipped this one 76 grand so 62 67 76 a nice ramp up in price a nice ramp up in options and a very different character between all three trucks and let's start out with the front end design because there are a couple of major things i want to point out now both of these silverados are the facelifted version of this brand new generation and they kind of look surprisingly different now let's start with the trail boss this is one handsome truck. I love what they have done with the facelift for this year. This new headlight design with these louvers along both ends, this big bold grill just looks phenomenal. Of course, the Trail Boss name has been around for a number of years now and it's received quite a number of re revisions in this facelift. And if we look at the front end, there's a couple of good things and a couple of bad things. So for example, the good thing, we've got the recovery points painted in red so you know that they're stronger than if they were just black. Of course, I'm kidding about that, but uh, recovery points, ace, really love that. What's not so good is all of this plastic down here. So this is an off-road equipped truck, but check out all that plastic. We got this big valence, we've got uh, this panel right here, and then more worryingly, the lowest point of the front end is actually the fog lights. Once again, covered in a louver design, looks great, but not a lot of clearance down here. If you go all the way down here, then you finally get to some actual uh, metal plating, but you really have to reach down, and unfortunately, the rocks don't have to reach far to snag something important. Now, if we contrast that to the ZR2, which is an even more extreme off-roader than the Trail Boss, check this out. First of all, right here, we've got this big cutout. This approach cutout so that your tire hits the rock before your front end, and we don't see hardly any plastic. We got this big metal bash plate over here. We've got more metal. The fog lights are significantly higher than what you'd find on the Trail Boss. We still have the recovery points, also painted in red, so they are extra functional. And then underneath, it's just skid plate after skid plate after skid plate. Lots of front end clearance with the ZR2, and that is what you want when you're approaching rocks or boulders, or even through sand dunes, you're gonna hit metal or nothing at all before you rip something off the underside. Now the AT4X, this is an interesting trim line because this is supposed to be a luxury oriented version of the ZR2, so we still have a, that huge amount of off-road capability, but the front end design is gonna be more similar to what you'd find on the Trail Boss. So yes, of course, the light signature is different, the grill signature is different, and of course, badging, but check this out. We got, once again, a large amount of plastic. So this whole front valence, all plastic. Over here, plastic, fog lights, super low. That's kind of low hanging fruit once again. And then you have to dive way down there before you get to a skid plate. So we don't even have one covering this underpan. It's not until you get to kind of the, the suspension areas where the uh, control arms meet the frame is where you get your skid plate. So a little, little different than the other two. And certainly from a body design, this is gonna be worse off-road than the Trail Boss and much worse than the ZR2. But of course, off-road is not the full story because these vehicles are intended to be everyday, driver, everyday drivers, family haulers, tow the boat to the lake, tow the camper to the trailhead. And for that, they all offer a large amount of variability as well. Now let's start with the Trail Boss because what's under the hood of this model is very, very cool. So the Trail Boss is the only one of these three trucks where you have a choice of engine configuration. So you can get it in the small 5.3 V8, okay, small in quotations there. You can get it in the 6.2, a uh, bunch of options, but the one that this one has makes it particularly special because this one is the baby Duramax 
or maybe I should say the middle Duramax. This is the three liter turbocharged diesel inline six, 277 horsepower, uh, 460 pound feet of torque. And this makes this vehicle a very versatile tool. So not only is this truck intended to go through rocks and the desert, but with this engine, it's also intended to get good fuel economy while towing your boat, while towing your toy. So that is a major plus with the Trail Boss. You can also save money by going for the 5.3. Now, if you look at the other two, both the ZR2 and the AT4X have one engine configuration. And that engine is a very potent option, but it does somewhat limit you in terms of fuel economy, especially while towing. So this has the tried and true 6.2 liter V8, as does the GMC. Small block Chevy in all of its goodness, 420 horsepower, 460 pound feet of torque for both of these vehicles. Uh, great engine. Uh, really, really capable all around, but in terms of fuel economy, which is an important aspect in today's world, you got to give it to the three liter diesel uh, for that ultimate kind of towing and hauling range on one tank. Uh, of course, diesel is typically more expensive right now than gasoline, but I do like the options that the Trail Boss gives you over the other two. Now, if we make our way kind of down the side of these trucks, we do see a significant difference in terms of tires between the Trail Boss and the ZR2. So we're running a Goodyear Wrangler on this vehicle, 275 65R18s, whereas the Trail Boss has a Goodyear Wrangler, but the Territory MT, 275 70R18s. So we've got a taller tire on the ZR2 compared to the Trail Boss. Also a different wheel design, make our way down the sides. As equipped, neither of these um, can be seen here with running boards. We come to the back, very similar beds, but the bumper design is quite different. So the Trail Boss has these nice chrome tips and I think they look fantastic, but that doesn't do you any favors well off-road. This is very limiting on the departure angle. Whereas if we take a look at the ZR2 or even the GMC, those tailpipes are gonna be tucked up way up high. You can actually barely see them poking out right there. Um, and that is a huge deal when hitting the trails. Uh, you're not gonna be squishing those nice chrome tips. The first thing that'll hit will be either the hitch or the rear bumper. But in terms of capability, that's not going to be one of the more significant aspects. What is going to be one of the more significant aspects are the shock absorbers. So the Trail Boss is equipped with a shock, which is an upgrade over the standard Silverado. You can kind of see it poking through there. Those are red Rancho shocks. Now, overall, a very kind of simple monotube design. We don't have any remote reservoirs, uh, no crazy bypasses like that. It is a long lasting durable shock, which has proven itself to be quite reliable over the years, but nothing compared to what the ZR2 or even the GMC have, because if you, it's a little tricky to see on this side, maybe we can see them better in the front, but that little bit of gold sticking out right there, this has those highly sophisticated multimatic shocks with the, uh, the, the crazy reservoirs that will take the abuse of off-road running um, for miles and miles and miles and miles. So this is a much more tailored tune for high-speed running than what you'd find on the Trail Boss. Uh, and once again, that shock is the same as what's gonna be on the Sierra AT4X. Now let's go ahead and hop in the inside the Trail Boss and take a look at the interior, and then we'll kind of jump up to the other two. So here we have the sticker. This vehicle is rated at 21 MPG combined, 20 in the city and 23 on the highway, which is pretty good for a full-size truck. Total vehicle price, 62,570. Now we are not talking about an inexpensive vehicle, but this is a nicely equipped interior with the latest and greatest in General Motors uh, updates. So we see these dual screens, which are huge. They look fantastic, very high fidelity. They absolutely nailed it on the screen quality and the user interface on this facelift of the Silverado. I really do love it. I do love the, the Google connectivity. Now, of course, some of the functionality in the system is going to be based on a subscription model, which is definitely worth noting, uh, but it is very quick, very easy, uh, and overall just a fantastic system. This interior, from a dashboard layout perspective, is way ahead of what you'll find on the previous generation of the Silverado. I also like the fully digital gauge cluster. Now, um, if we look at some other things, uh, integrated trailer brake controller, 
over here on the right side of the steering column. We've got dual zone automatic climate control. This is a well-equipped truck. This uh, Silverado heated seats are in the middle now. They're not on the doors. Uh, we don't have ventilated seats at $62,000. We do have dual zone automatic climate and then a relatively small sunroof. Now, one area where the uh, Trail Boss kind of falls behind the other two from an interior standpoint are the seats. So this is a very basic flat seat design. Not a lot of support, not a lot of contouring, um, at least to my body and I, I think to a lot of folks as well. This is not a particularly comfortable seat for extremely long haul road trips. It is okay around town. It's good on shorter road trips, but long haul I would like a little bit more support. And we're definitely gonna get that support when we step into the ZR2. Let's go ahead and check that one out. Do love the sound of that diesel though. Has just a fantastic, fantastic amount of kind of low and clatter is, is the best word for it, I think, but it just really sounds good. Now, take a look at the seat design on this ZR2 in comparison. This is how you do a seat. You've got this kind of rippled pattern in the middle, but the bolstering is so much better, much more supportive. In general, I just find that to be a much more comfortable seat design. Now, overall dash layout, pretty similar, right? You got the dual screens, uh, just like the Trail Boss, but of course, the colors, trims, and specs are gonna be different on this model. We stepped up about 5K from that diesel uh, Trail Boss to this 6.2 ZR2. Um, so like, for example, take a look at this, right? In that vehicle, we had kind of a wood-like trim in here. We've got this uh, faux carbon fiber finish, and then we've got this green stitching throughout on the dashboard, a nice kind of leather wrap dashboard, which looks very, very premium. Turn the radio down there. Um, and also some additional functionality, heated and ventilated seats over here. Still have the same Google Assistant and the Google integration. And yeah, they, they did a good job. Now the steering wheel is quite similar between the ZR2 and the Trail Boss. Lots and lots and lots of piano black finish as equipped. Overall though, a pretty similar experience except for the seats. Uh, and these seats are much better. You'll notice ours does not actually have the sunroof as equipped. Uh, we did not expect that option. Um, but let's go ahead and hop into the Sierra because while these two may be fairly similar, the Sierra is gonna elevate it a whole bunch of notches. Now, I love this 6.2. It's a great engine, but it is uh, not quite as um, aggressive sounding as I would like. Now, quick comparison between these two. So these should be cousins in every, every meaning of the word because these are the ultimate off-road trucks from Chevrolet and from GMC in the full-size class. They both have locking differentials front and back electronically selectable. Whereas the Trail Boss has the automatic G80, it works fairly well, but it isn't a true electronic locker like you'd find on the GMC or the ZR2. But even though both of these trucks have those amazing lockers, there's a lot of separation from off-road capability, starting with the tires. So we see the same tire on the GMC that we see on the uh, Trail Boss, which is interesting, 275-65 R18. So the ZR2 has a bigger tire. We talked about the front end design already. Uh, the ZR2 is a much more useful front end design for off-roading. This, this looks nicer, I think, this 84 x but it's not quite as useful, not quite as functional on the trail. We showed some of the skid plate differences, but let's show the inside because we're gonna see a pretty big separation there on the inside, starting once again with a major departure in the seat design. And look at this beautiful white piping along the edges, this red stitching. This is a premium feeling, a premium looking seat design, which I think just looks fantastic. And this is the most comfortable of the three. Not quite as heavily bolstered as a ZR2. If you're a larger individual, maybe you'll appreciate that, but better overall than what you'll find in the Trail Boss. And we also see improvements on the interior. So at first glance, you're like, wow, it's the same interior, but it isn't. They actually have improved this substantially. So like the full stitched and integrated leather dash with the contrasting white stitching looks great. Down here, same thing all throughout. The touch points are much nicer where we had kind of that plastic trim on the ZR2. We've got this leather material. It feels really nice. Also functional changes, start buttons in a different location. Trailer brake controller is in a different location as well. It's actually moved down here. Um, but yeah, I love this interior and it does feel a step above what you'd find in the, uh, the, the Chevys over there. We also have like a different uh, location for the air vents. It's a little bit different 
than compared to the Chevrolet models. Once again, though, every option you can think of, it's got the, uh, the heated seats, it's got the, uh, the, the cooled seats. Uh, still a small sunroof, but that is paired with a suede headliner, which feels very, very nice. Uh, we got the electronic mirror in this truck as well, but you also pay for all of that. So this vehicle comes in at 76, 790, and the fuel economy 16 combined, uh, 14 city and just 18 highway. So much worse than what you'd find in the, uh, I'm having a complete blank, in the, uh, the Trail Boss Diesel. Down here, we've got our switch for our locking differentials. Uh, also a very nice touch. So that is the big difference, right? This is the luxury oriented truck. In the past, that wouldn't mean much. Um, Sierras and Silverados had largely the same interior. Finally, on this new update, on this newest generation, they really separated it out. And then one more thing I want to show you in the back. All three of these trucks as equipped have the multi-pro tailgate, which was a feature that debuted on the Sierra a little while ago. Of course, nothing works as you planned once you start rolling camera. <laughs> There we go. Got to get the order right. And then this one also has the kicker sound down there by your feet. So if you're out tailgating, pretty cool little touch. If you take a look at the Silverado, this one does not. So we did not spec ours with that kicker sound system. But overall, kind of an interesting comparison. So what we have in my mind is, let's start with the Trail Boss. This is a fantastic truck for someone who wants to tow a trailer, get good fuel efficiency. Maybe you want to save money, you want a smaller V8 than the other two. Um, great truck. The G80 makes this very capable. The Rancho shocks are pretty good every day, and the tires make this thing usable on the trail, but it won't go everywhere. You got that limitation on the front end design. You got these smaller tires than the other truck that we'll just talk about. Uh, the shock design isn't as good and you're missing the front differential. The ZR2, this is for the person that wants a no compromise off-road beast with those uh, improved front end departure uh, and approach angles. We've got the locking electronic front and rear differential. We've got the large oversized tires. You can get it with all sorts of skid plates and off-road goodies. This thing is built for someone that is regularly exploring the trail, not as a side project. Uh, it's got the 6.2 fast engine capable engine, not fuel efficient. And then we come to the uh, Sierra 84 x and this is for someone who wants 80% um, of the capability of the ZR2 with the lockers, but also wants a very comfortable plush refined interior, um, maybe wants that, that GMC brand, wants some of the uh, nice exterior touches that the Sierra offers. This is for someone that, that wants a lot of luxury in the truck, but also wants to fairly regularly take it out on the trail. Now for me, I'm a big fan of the off-road nature of the ZR2, so that's gonna be my choice, but for the, someone on a, on a slightly more strict budget, uh, definitely take a look at the Trail Boss, and if you don't wanna sacrifice any creature comforts from basically a Denali, check out the AT4X. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. This has been Tommy. Check out alttfl.com for the latest and greatest in new truck reviews.